Welcome to Leavenworth National Fish Hatchery. Every fish that comes back to our hatchery has a story to tell. Our hatchery is part of a huge effort to keep salmon in our rivers, in spite of all the pressures they face. Dams, boat traffic, habitat damage and loss, pollution, and other issues created by people have eroded the health of our rivers and the populations of salmon and other fish. We serve the American people by keeping salmon and their habitat healthy and alive, part of the great ecosystem that supports us all. We need to know whether our efforts are successful. That's where the monitoring and evaluation team comes in. In the spawning shed, each salmon contributes information. The Mid-Columbia Fish and Wildlife Conservation Office and the Regional Fish Health Program run tests and collect data that will help make sure we are doing our work as well as possible. Let's take a look at how the process works, starting from when the fish are about the length of your fingers. When our fish are large enough to be called fingerlings, it is time for them to be marked and tagged. Trailers and marking crews arrive at the hatchery in May. Fish are pumped into the marking trailer through a pipe. Every single one of our hatchery fish has its adipose fin clipped off. This is a small fin on the back. Until recently, we didn't know whether this fin served any purpose. Now we know it helps the fish detect the speed of flowing water, but since the fish has other ways of measuring that, clipping the fin does no harm. Salmon with adipose fins are wild. Anglers must release wild fish. That's why hatchery fish are marked by removing the adipose fin so anglers can recognize which ones to keep and which to let go. Fins were once cut off by hand. Now machines can do most of the work. Each fish is guided into a slot where a camera photographs the fin, automatic scissors cut it off, and the camera takes another look to be sure the fin is gone before releasing the fish. If the camera detects a fin in the second picture, or if the fish is too large or too small, it is shunted to a different chamber and the fin is cut by hand. A percentage of fish get a tiny piece of wire injected into their heads. This coated wire tag is about the thickness of a mechanical pencil's lead. The wire is imprinted with information in a code that tells where the fish is from and what year it was tagged. Later in the year, when the fish have grown larger, another marking trailer arrives for a different kind of tag. Passive integrated transponder tags, called pit tags, are about the size of a grain of rice. They cannot give off a signal, but they can respond to one. Pit tag detection antennas can be installed wherever researchers want to locate fish. Many antennas are in fish ladders at dams, others in culverts or under bridges. These tags are inserted by hand. The tags are loaded into syringes and injected into temporarily numbed fish. The procedure is fast and the fish recovers quickly. The fish are double-checked to be sure they have tags and additional information is collected about each one. Not all our fish have pit tags, just a percentage. When the tagged fish are detected by an antenna, we can estimate how many untagged fish might be with them. When our salmon go out to sea, we can track them as they move downstream by watching for pit tag signals. We can use pit tag detections to estimate how many adults are returning upriver. This kind of information helps the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife and the tribes to plan for fishing seasons. We can also see how quickly the fish swims upstream from the ocean back to our hatchery. Our spring Chinook arrive in May and June 
and are spawned in August. When spawning day comes, each fish yields important data. After spawning, fish are passed through a detector that alerts staff to whether there is an embedded tag present. Some salmon have a coated wire tag in their heads. The heads of those fish will be frozen and the tag retrieved later. Retrieving these tiny tags from the heads of fish is painstaking work, typically done in winter when field season for most salmon biologists is over. Tag numbers are read under a microscope and added to a huge database that reveals where our fish were found. Scales are removed from each fish. The scales are put on a paper card. Scales can be read by looking at the rings, just like on a tree cross-section. The thickness of the annual rings tells the story of whether the fish was raised in a hatchery and what conditions it encountered in the ocean. More information is collected at the next station along the line. Pieces of fin are clipped and placed on a paper card for DNA samples and the length of the fish is recorded. Sampling, as you can see, requires a team of people working together. What we learn from our salmon helps us fine-tune our production process, determine fishing opportunities, and respond to changes in the environment. Ultimately, it's all about keeping salmon in our rivers for everyone to enjoy, from humans to wildlife. In our next video, we'll show how we care for salmon from the time they are eggs until we release them into the river.